good morning everybody sarasota tim coming to you from the orchards rv park in southern utah new harmony utah just south of cedar city and it is saturday i'm on my way to cedar city i'm gonna grab a rental car take the things that i need out of this and uh come back here and prepare to pack i gotta go buy a suitcase i gotta go to walmart buy another shirt just kidding but uh let's see who we got in the neighborhood today we got we got a dirty windshield i can tell you that let's go down this lane here now it was kind of a few more people last night but these people are travelers this is kind of a a lot of people are just staying over here it's a <clears throat> a one night place for a lot of people one to three nights <laughs> and then they're moving on they're traveling and they got the big ones look at the people that are in the RV world I mean these units here are as much as a home folks don't think that RV life is some low life there's there is oh my gosh what people can spend and then if it's a class A that you drive it is more than a house and if it's a big, uh, what do you call a uh, uh, fifth wheel, well, they're expensive. And then you got to have a $100,000 dually diesel truck to pull it. So don't think people don't have any money that buy RVs. Sure, there's a segment of people that are living in these riggedy things. But guess what? Look at what some people are living in in sticks and bricks. Look at some of these trashy neighborhoods and apartments and all kinds of stuff. So don't don't prejudge. I'm not saying you do, but some of you may uh, thinking that that's a low life. <laughs> Let me tell you, you have one of them big old diesel pushing buses. Hey, let's go over and get a cup of coffee from uh, Jess. Let's go over here and get us a. Oh, you know what I should have done? I'm gonna turn around. Ha <laughs> ha! Somebody was asking me yesterday. I'll show you. They want to know where they can buy that that Highlander Grog. Well, let me make sure there's nobody behind me. I don't T-bone out in front of somebody. Um, we're gonna go down to the Sinclair Station, which is quite a ways up to the next exit. I missed my exit the other day, and I had to drive all the way up there to turn around. But I just decided to go on into Cedar City because uh, maybe I needed to hit Walmart or whatever. But yeah, if you pass this exit, number 42, you're in for a long haul before you get your next exit to turn around. And there's the park right there, RV Resort, the orchards. And look, right, right, right there, right Right there, there's mine, right there. Right there. <laughs> First I thought, that ain't mine. Big old window in the back. <laughs> ah, let's get up here where it's 80 miles an hour, baby. Oh, I'm gonna be screaming in that Corolla, Sentra, whatever they give me. A little gas zipper, I'm not gonna have to act. I got a maintenance light on, folks. I gotta get an oil change at Walmart. Uh, I have plenty of time when we get back from uh, California to just drop this off and leave it and uh, get the oil change done at Walmart and uh, you know we can wait on it I can make an appointment I'm doing 72 look at this guy pulling a tractor blowing me blowing my doors off there's that beautiful Utah, baby. Right there. And over here. Hey, you guys remember Jeff uh, that owns the house, him and Shelly in Jacksonville, that beautiful big house? Well, it's on the market. It's on the market, probably sold yesterday. And they, um, you won't believe what he did to the cramper. Completely changed it. Uh, he's got a completely different uh, galley in the back. It's all diamond plate stuff. And the, the kitchen area is completely changed. 
He, uh, he put a ladder on the side, a rack on the top, some additional uh, thing on the tongue. And uh, yeah, he made it his own. So I wish them the best. They're coming right here to their brand new home, their brand new big giant home that they bought. I had some people telling me yesterday regarding real estate that a lot of these people here that have a house in California, they sold it for so much money that they were able to go to Arizona, Nevada, Utah, and pay cash for these houses. I mean, we talked yesterday about the average home is $440,000. That would be a crack house in California. If you've got any kind of decent home anywhere, uh, you got a million dollar house. So a lot of people, it's changing a little bit now because houses are getting more expensive even here. But so many of these houses that are selling here are people that are selling their, uh, their homes that have hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity uh, from being a California house. And when they sell it, they um, they pay cash for their uh, for their homes here. Big, beautiful, fine homes on golf courses, and I mean, yeah. So good for, kudos for them. You know, that's how a lot of people be able to do it. Uh, and the average schmuck isn't going to come into Arizona or um, Utah here and go and look at one of those houses and you know be a first time buyer or they sold their house in Arkansas. <laughs> And they're gonna, you know, come in here and pay cash. It could happen, but not likely. But people that live in California, I mean, they just rolled over into a. They're like, why do I gotta live here, and um, pay these high prices, five dollars a gallon for gas? They'll give me a million, two million for my house, and I can go buy a, a house five times nicer for seven, eight hundred thousand dollars and have Buku in the bank still, I'm out of here. <laughs> I would, I absolutely would. Even if you do leave good weather and beaches and all that, but some don't, you know, some are like, hey, I know I can make a million dollars in my house, but I would prefer uh, living here. I like to surf, I like the 70 degree temperatures year round. I like the earthquakes, the fires. <laughs> you know, different strokes for different folks, right, people? Everybody's got a plan. And I made a video this morning talking about, I don't know what my plan is. I got a plan. I want to plan. But I have no idea. I have no idea where I will be in a month, six months, next year. But I can tell you it's going to be with Miss T., and it won't be in an RV uh, because I wouldn't want to be in an RV. Not that RV, anyway, uh, with two people. It's ridiculous. But it's a beautiful RV uh, to go and travel and find a place, you know, without having to pay for a hotel room. You can stay in an RV park for a week or a month for, a, for pennies compared to signing a lease somewhere or you know, you don't know where you want to go. Here you can explore around. That's the purpose of that RV. That's why that RV was purchased, I believe. Uh, I just got it in October of last year. It's only been about eight months. So here we are now enjoying it uh, like we wanted to do uh, for the hot weather in Florida to get out of there. And at the same time, it's uh, uh, bringing us together again to uh, find a place that we can buy rent, squat, who knows, somewhere that we can live. And it may be uh, also uh, something that God's got a plan where we don't buy right away. We may have to rent and, and wait it out, but it'll be a nice place, a very economical place. But meanwhile, when you're renting, you know, all you're doing is drawing down your money. At the same time, you can be drawing down your money a a lot quicker by buying something right now uh, with a big down payment and into something that could drop in value and you may not want to be there in a year or two. So 
you know, you really got to do your homework, man. You don't want to mess up. And if you've been fortunate enough to put a few pennies together and you're 65 years old now, and it doesn't seem like people get a few pennies put together until they're older, and that's when things come together, that's when the dessert comes in, don't blow it. Don't do the wrong thing. Don't go down to the casino and try to double it. <laughs> don't go rent something for an exorbitant amount of money and draw your money down. Don't go buy an RV if you're not going to live in it and get a rebate back like I'm getting every month. I've gotten over $10,000 back from what I paid for mine by not renting somewhere. For what I've paid in RV parks for the last eight months, well, you can actually go the last more than two years because between the Wolf Pup and the Crasher, I haven't paid rent at an apartment in over two years. And so I have saved, I don't know, $40,000 minimum. Anybody coming? We're going to the Sinclair gas station to get some Highlander grog. That's right, I've saved twelve, fourteen hundred dollars a month. Um, from what I paid at Teddy's, from what I paid in Jacksonville, and what I've paid, uh, you know, out here, I'm st I'm sitting still. I'm not out burning gas. What I paid at the Tropicana, seventy-five dollars a week. I mean, I haven't given any landlord any of my money for two years, not to speak of. So think about what other people have spent at two, three thousand dollars a month rent plus utilities. Or let's say uh, two, say, let's say twenty five hundred a month with the utilities is what maybe an average person spends. What's twenty five hundred times twenty four? Uh, you know my math. Two times twenty five is fifty grand. So twenty four times uh, whatever. A lot of money, folks. A lot of money. It paid for my camper. Anything I get back for that is found money. So, and I'm going to be selling it if I find a place, or I might store it. I'm not sure uh, to get the uh, to get the house, but uh, I would I wouldn't sell it right away. That is for 